Hello guys, welcome. It's Terry from Smooth Workshop here and welcome to build video number five uh, in the series of this Rebel Kit, the Peterbilt 359 conventional truck in 116 scale. Um, it's not a step step video or a build video series as such, it's more of a sort of an update where I've got to and I've just realised it's been a while since I've updated you guys. A um, lot of clean up on this kit, uh, as you might have gathered from uh, the previous videos. Um, and I thought I would just uh, relay where I've got to, uh, what I'm in the middle of doing and, and stuff like that. So, um, I've got a rather important um, thing to, to note, actually. Um, one of my followers on YouTube uh, pointed out that uh, the front... Uh, anti roll bar here. You might notice some sprue goo in there. Um, right, in the instructions, <clears throat> I'll just find the relevant page. Say if he, if he can find it again. In the instructions, right, in the instructions, it shows you to put the roll bar on with the arms pointing up the way. Okay. It's actually 180 degrees out. The instructions are upside down. Um, now, hopefully I've still got the little white part available that I... I was prepped last night. <laughs> have I lost it? Or have I put them in the bag? Um, give me two seconds, guys. I've got a big big bags of bits off to the side here. I found them. Right, so... It's not actually a roll bar, this. It's... <clears throat> It supports um, one of the side panels on the truck. No, I think it's that one. Right, so I'll just try and... It's a big model, this, so bear with me. Yeah, so the way the instructions tell you to put this on, that part of the bar sits there. Now, unfortunately, um, when you go to put this part on... Now, is it for this side? Yeah, it's for that side. So one of, one of the body panels goes on the side like this. And it is also mounted into it. Now, hopefully picking this up on camera, there's a little dimple there. And that arm goes on there to support it. If, if you do it as per instructions, the support is in the wrong place. So it's worth noting that um, this, what looks like an anti-roll bar, is actually a support bar for the, for the two side um, body panels. Um, so I had to... Uh, I pla because I'd fixed it with extra Tamiya Extra Thin, I just put more Tamiya Extra Thin on and, and pulled it off again and then rotated it the right way and put it in and, and fixed it with a bit of sprue goo and stuff like that. Excuse me, I've got the hiccups now. Uh, sprue goo and stuff like that. So um, the chassis and that's almost about ready to go into primer. Um, I've got a couple of uh, air tanks. Um, I'm in the middle of cleaning them up just now. There's a lot of clean-up. I'll just show you. There's one of the air tanks here. Now, hopefully, you can make this out. Big seam lines down it. And uh, all the way along there. So, I've dressed this one up. And cleaned it all up. And these sit... And I'll just spin this round again. These sit on these two brackets here. Okay? Like so. Mm, not the best of uh, ideas for fitting them, but, you know, it kind, kind of fits. So there's a lot of scope for having it out of line and back, back and forward. And then underneath these goes, which I've built up already, one of the steps um, goes in a wee slot in there and comes out to the side. Now, looking at this step, again, maybe some of you guys that have built these uh, might want to comment. Um, it looks as if the only contact surface is along the edge of there. It goes into that slot like so. But then, if you want to get it square, do, are these supposed to glue onto that, these outriggers? Um, it's all a bit... There's loads of gaps and stuff. It's not quite... doesn't quite look right. So I'm still trying to figure that bit out. So that's that bit anyway. Um... I'm also going to be putting LEDs in this. Um, so, the backlights here, I have uh, drilled out. There was a little projection on there. I've drilled that out to allow me... Now, there's 
a rear brake light and indicator has to go in these and these fit on the back of the chassis um, roughly like in there like so okay so these sit at the back it's quite hard to manipulate this so you can see it so there's one of the back lights there okay so I've got to try and squeeze both a red brake light and an indicator in there. So I'm going to, I've ordered up some uh, small SMDs. And the idea is uh, I'll have the, the indicator and brake light in there. I've drilled a hole through the back of them and I'll, I'll run the wiring along the back of the chassis. So that, that's, that's those. Now, um, in the last video, you will have seen I've put the engine together. Done a bit in it since then. I have... Uh, uh, primed it all in Steinol Res uh, Neutral Yellow, which is the colour the engine is at the moment. And I have done the painting of the gearbox in a steel, which was uh, Mr. Colour Super Metallic Steel. I've still got to do a, an oil pin wash and darken that down and stuff like that on there. Uh, so that's looking good. I did manage to get my cat yellow. I'm just going out my drawer here um, for the engine. Uh, so I'll spray the engine up in that and it's uh, from Zero Paints and it's Caterpillar Yellow. So if you're looking for the yellow for it, that's the paints you need. That's from Zero Paints. Uh, you can get that from Hero Boy. So that's what I'll be uh, spraying the engine in before I, I detail it up. So that's kind of the next stage with the engine and that. Um, obviously I'll mask up the gearbox and then I'll spray all this and then I'll, I'll do all my fine detail painting and everything like that. So that's where the engine's at. <coughs> Uh, I also, and uh, sorry if I go M and um a lot, it's kind of like a Scottish punctuation. Um, I don't script any of this, and it's kind of like how Scottish people speak. So, yeah, all the chrome parts, I've stripped them back. Um, all the fuel all the fuel tanks and everything were um, in chrome. And when you put the two halves together, they don't match up very well. You'll notice all this white stuff. This is, this is uh, sprue goo. Uh, this side I have totally flattened back and prepared and again along all these seams and stuff. This edge still needs a bit of work so I, I put sprue goo on that last night. Uh, if you're wondering what sprue goo is, it's a little pot I've made up, I probably need to make up more. I call it sprue goo. Um, when you have a almost empty bottle of Tamiya Extra Thin, I just cut up little bits of sprue. Say when we're down about there, cut up lots of little bits of sprue, sit them in it overnight, and it melts down, and it goes into a little consistency. It's almost like Tipex, um, because you're using it. Oh, this is getting a bit low. This stuff, but there you go. Um, and you use that to fill some of the gaps. The, the advantage with that over filler is it bonds, because it is basically just melted sprue. And you can sand it and scribe it and everything like that. So, yeah, a lot of... If you hear me talking about smoogoo or sprugoo, that's what I'm using to fill a lot of the joints and, and build up parts that weren't very good. Um, so I have used some on the... What I'm calling an anti roll bar, but it's not. It's a, a body panel uh, outrigger. So, yeah, um, the chromes wasn't... Obviously, if, if I had to just kept the kit's original chrome on these with a mismatch um, and all the panels and everything... These would have looked horrendous. Uh, the issue is, obviously, I've got to re-chrome them again. So I've got the two tanks almost done. Um, again, a, a bit of, a bit of uh, smoogoo here and there, just for a couple of bits. So a lot of, the, a lot of the stuff I'm doing at the moment is clean up. So I stripped all the chrome off. I just used bleach, and it came off really quick. It's really poor quality chrome on this kit. So it took, like, 10 minutes a pop. Um... So, yeah, just standard household bleach. So, a couple of the other bits I've went ahead and done. Um, one of the main ones. Sorry for all the crinkling. I've got stuff in bags here. Right, the big front uh, grill on the front. That was all chrome. It was pretty poor quality stuff. Um, so, I've stripped that. Now, uh, the headlights. I'm going to be putting two small uh, SMD LEDs in there. That's the surface mount ones. Uh, and I was thinking, right, how do I get the wire for that in behind there? Now, I've got a picture I'm just going to flash up just now of how Peterbilt do it. So an image should magically appear just now. And all they do is the wire comes out the bottom of the headlight and goes through a hole in the side of the radiator. 
uh, back to me. So yeah, so that none of those holes are there. So what I have done is I have drilled out the bottom, okay, into the recess where the lights go. So I'll put I'll, I'll solder up two SMD LEDs in there, and I'll probably fix them with a little bit of plastic card, bond them in the back, paint it all silver and that, and put the cover on. The wires will come down through there. Now what I did to make it look neater was I actually um, drilled the hole in through the bracket to come into the inside. Um. And I've grooved it so that when I put the wires in, I can I can sprue glue over the top so it looks like the wires are going down inside this bracket. I could have just had them coming out, you know, and going like how they have it, but I'm trying to make it a little bit neater. So I'm I'm kind of planning this ahead for when I, I put the lighting in. So I've done that already. Um, so that's the drill part. Um, I've also stripped down... <clears throat> two big uh, exhaust silencers. Uh, again, these were chrome. Um, and when they went together, nothing really lined up. I've had to use a lot of uh, sprue goo to match them up, a lot of sanding. The only problem is I've lost some of the dimpling where to join up. There's not a lot I can do about that. I had thought about taking my Dremel out and trying to... It's not going to happen. Um, so, yeah. Again, I've stripped all the chrome off these, so I'm going to have to re-chrome them. So talking about re-chroming, I've had to do this on all the parts. Um, noticeably on some of the wheels, I don't know which one it was. Uh, right, on the wheels, you've got this little bit of detail in the middle of there. So, okay, there's one of them. I'm rustling about here, I found it. It's got a really bad mould in there, and I don't know if I'm going to get in to clean that little nub up. It's not really noticeable. It's just a bit of a shame. So, yeah. Also, at the moment, all my chrome parts are sitting in a bag. All the bits I've got to re-chrome. Um, my exhausts and, and everything like that. So, they're all sitting in there. And as I say, I've, I've prepped all this. Um, I had thought about, now I'll just show you, uh, the front bumper, as far as re-chroming, right, so I've stripped the chrome off, I tried, you might think this looks great, I'm not happy with it, I tried the Molotov, okay, and it's a bit patchy when you spray it, I've also got a couple of blemishes in there, now it is chrome-like, but it's not all that durable, and it's a pain in the backside to spray. So what I'm actually going to use, I'm going to strip all that back, and I'm going to go with Bushy uh, van der Rosten's um, metal polishing powder. I've, I've actually got a review and a demo of that up on my channel that I did the other day. Because um, it gives, if the spoon that I did is somewhere about, that I used for the test, there it is, it gives a kind of, this is a bit tarnished, but it gives a kind of a chromey effect. Um, and I'm thinking I've gone with that stuff that rather than the, the Molotov. So everything that I've stripped the chrome off, I'm going to try the Ushi powders on because um, it's a bit more durable. I've also got to try and plan out uh, how to do the two, sorry for going to it all the time, two little spotlights in the bumper there. The clear part has a rod on it. It goes through there to fix it. So I'm going to have to try and take that clear rod off and then obviously I'll be fixing LEDs in for the back somehow, somehow or another. So I'm still planning all that. So that's that bit. Uh, I have put together, it required a bit of clean up, uh, the hood and the fenders, which is the part that the big, I'll get it back out the bag. Big grill goes on. Now I'm planning on how to paint these and when to put LEDs in and things like that. So obviously this fits onto there like so roughly speaking. Come on, Terry, get it. Get your brain working, young man. Right, so that's going to fix onto the front like so. Okay. Now the bodywork is going to be a different colour from the radiator. And I'm thinking of the best way of how to do it. I was thinking about 
gluing it together, uh, priming it all, doing my metal effect powders. Uh, it's going to be quite hard to get in round about that. So I think I'm going to have to do that separate. The only thing is when you paint something separate and want to put it together, the glue that you use might um, damage the paint. So I've got a, a new glue that I'm going to be using. Um, it's a, a, a glue that jewelers use. Uh, it's GS Hypo Cement. Um, it's got a really fine... Oh, it's glued on, actually. That's handy, Terry. <laughs> I should be a bit cleaner when using it. That's how good that stuff is. I'm going to need to use pliers to take it off. It's got a really fi fine like hypodermic syringe end on it. Uh, and it's clear. And it dries clear. So I'll probably use that for fixing the parts together after paint painting them. Um, <clears throat> so that's that part. Yeah, so trying all that out. Um, I'll need to see how the hinges go and everything. A lot of clean up on it, smoothing off. But it's not bad. It's a big, a big sized old uh, piece of stuff. So that's that. I have also... Um, if I can get it out the out the bag. Oh, what's this part? Oh, that's the dash. It's just falling out. Right. I have also been working on the cab. Um. So there was a lot of clean up on that, especially round about the the aerodynamic spoiler at the front, and I have. Loose fitted at the moment the interior of the cabin just so I could see what I was working with. Okay, so uh, all my seats are, are in, in there, and I'm just thinking about they're just blue tacked in, in just now or white tacked in because I'll paint the chair separately because I'll need to get in to do all the, all the detail in the sides and that. Uh, it shows you it being a kind of purpley colour, so I've not decided on the on the colour for the interior on there yet. So that's all just sort of dry fitted at the moment. There is a dashboard which sits in there. Um, what I'm looking at at the moment is the possibility of backlighting this. Now, uh, all these wee dials here. Um, I have put an LED behind it and it, it shows through the plastic. Uh, but I'll need to light block it. Uh, I have got, I haven't got it to hand, I have adhesive um, aluminium metal foil. And what I was thinking, if I can shine a light through to the back here, and it shows where all the little dots are, uh, I could put a little bit of tracing paper on there, mark out all the dots, cut it out in the aluminium foil, and so that it, it kind of masks off. I'm going to play about with that to see if I can backlight the, dash, the dashboard. It might not come to anything. Um, the other thing I was going to light up on the top of the cab is there are running lights. There's one, two, three, four, five running lights. Now, these are particularly thin. Uh, there's little pods going top of here with tiny, tiny little clear parts. I was thinking I might be able to drill these out and using fiber optic run. I might put a false ceiling in here, uh, run five fiber optics down one side into where I want to run the lighting uh, and light them up with an LED and then hide the five fiber optics with a bit of plastic card that I can, I'll make a template out uh, and cover those up. Uh, as far as uh, the indicators on the side of the wings, I haven't had a proper look at those yet because there are on the side of the wings, uh, the fenders as the Americans call them. There's little indicators stick up here. I don't know if I've got enough size in them to make them in indicators. I might have to do a bit of scratch building with that. But my plan is to have the two indicators going. The ones in the mirrors, uh, I don't know if they're just reflectors. Uh, where the two mirrors come up here, there's a little... And it shows you in the image. I don't know if it's a reflector or an indicator. I very much doubt I'll get lighting into that. So they'll just be painted up orange. Um, next bit, what else have I done? Right, this is it, the big box, the crew part that goes onto the back of the, the cab. It's massive. It's all warped and I've got it all with blue tack and tape and everything just to try it just now for size um, and give it a bit of clean up. 
Uh, I'm go my, my initial plan was to hold, host all the wiring and switches in here somehow and leave the roof so it comes off so I can access it. I don't know if that's quite how I'm going to be able to do it. So still in the planning stages, but it's when you, when you add all this together, it's a big beastie of a big beastie of a truck. So I've been playing with that. Anything else? It's really just all prepping parts at the moment. Um, I've done a few bits of sub assemblies and stuff. Um, things like the air intake pipes. I've got them all cleaned up and prepped. Um, just having a look through what else. The steps, wheels, radiator. Um, air boxes, things like that. So, this is a bag of the parts that I have managed to prep and clean up. Um, I've got another bag of parts that oh, is all going to fall out. Are small parts that are still to be prepped and cleaned up. Uh, I've got a big bag of tyres that I need to try and stretch. What my thoughts behind stretching it is I'm going to get some warm water um, because when they sit on the rims, these don't quite sit against the rim. So I was thinking of, you know the, you know these uh, polystyrene packing foam what's it things? Uh, pack the tyres up inside with those, sit them in, in warm water hottish water, let them sit in that for a while, take them out and let them cool down and let them sit with the packing, packing foam in them and hopefully it will pull the rims out a bit um, so that they don't slide off the wheels and I also have to, this is actually the one that I've prepped so I've sanded this off to make it needs a bit more work um, to make it look like it's been used and I've also scuffed the sidewall up a bit and it looks quite good just like that so, yeah, a little bit of prep on the tyres. Um, where else? I haven't even decided on the, the body colour as yet. So, at the moment, my, my main concentration is on getting this chassis finished and figuring out how to run the wiring and the painting sequence and stuff like that. So, I'm, I'm really quite happy with where I've got to it. Uh, I haven't done a lot for a while, but I just thought I would update you that I have made some progress. So... Rather than making it a big long video, I'll try to keep these about 20 minutes or so. Uh, yeah, so after this I'll try and get all this into primer once I get these tanks and that on and figure out what I'm doing with my wiring and then I think next I'll be moving on to getting the, the road wheels and stuff on um, and getting like a rolling chassis ready uh, in between times. Uh, I love the detail on this engine, uh, getting the engine done up and working out some of the wiring problems with the cab and everything. So I hope you found this useful. I think that's about all I've got to put on here. Yeah, but there's just a note about this is this outrigger is the wrong way, um, as it shows you there. I've done most of that uh, painting up the engine. I have put all the engine together. Yeah, and then it's on the road wheels and stuff like that. Yeah, so. Once it once I get the chat once I get the chassis painted up and the engine painted up, I can get the uh, the engine into the chassis, get it all the right way up, get all these in. These are just uh, dry fitted at the moment, the the axles and and the shafts. So I've, I've air tanks next onto there. That's about as much as I can actually do on that, and then it's going to be trying to prime it, but it's quite a big thing, so it'll be fun. To maybe do it in stages. Uh, once this is all primed, I can start working on the wheels and the running gear. Again, for the chrome effect, I'm going to use that, uh, the powders. If the powders don't work, the good thing is you can you can paint over them. So I'm leaving my options open. Uh, I had thought about using alclads, but they're not very durable. Um, so, yeah, we, we will see where we go with that. So again, as I say, hope you found this useful. Try to keep them short. Hopefully the audio is recorded. Uh, it's Terry from Smooth Workshop. And uh, as always, happy modelling, and we'll see you for the next one. Bye. Thank you.